Hey guys, it's Jake here with eTrailer. Today we have a 2023 Ford Escape and we're gonna be taking a look at and I'm gonna show you how to install the Roadmaster base plate. Just to show you what it looks like when our tow bar is not hooked up to it, you'll just simply disconnect your tow bar, pull this spring-loaded pin, twist it, and slide this bar out. And this is all that's gonna be left on the front of your vehicle. You're gonna have these handy tabs to be able to attach your safety cables to. Um, and it's gonna come with a bracket to mount your six pole um, that you'll need for your diode wiring. In addition to the wiring bracket, it's also going to have a bracket that will be there for you to attach your breakaway switch to. Now when your tow bar is not hooked up, this is what the face of your vehicle is going to look like. And to me, that's really, really important. Um, the new Ford Escapes, or the newer Ford Escapes, look really good. And you'd hate to have, just because you want to flat tow your vehicle, um, you'd hate to have that affect the front looks of your vehicle. Um, I like how um, the you drill a hole for the connection points to your base plate. Now that can be a little bit difficult, but if you, as long as you follow along with the installation that we're about to do here in a minute, um, you should have no problem getting it to fit and look just like this. Two other components that we often recommend um, is going to be a high-low adapter on the RV side. That is to get the tow bar within three inches of level. So for example, our motorhome's hitch at the center of the pin on our hitch was at 19 inches. The center of our pin on our tow bar is at 14 inches. So that's five inches of difference. So we added a four inch drop tow bar or a uh, hitch extender um, that'll drop it down four inches. That'll get us within one inch of perfectly level. Now, as far as the installation goes, um, I really liked how this went on. Um, it will scare a lot of people that the front fascia has to come off, but this is a very easy front fascia to take off. Um, as long as you can find the same bolts that we found, uh, you should have no problem getting the front of this removed. It essentially, after you get the bolts removed, a lot of front faces you have to pull really hard to get them to break loose. This one I noticed it did not. So it comes off pretty easy. And I also liked how the only modifications that you have to make on the front of your vehicle is only going to involve plastic trimming. You don't have to drill any holes. To begin our installation, we're going to have four 10 millimeter bolts on the top of our radiator cover that we'll have to remove. I've got these two off, we'll have the same two on the driver's side. Both of your wheel wells on the driver and passenger side, you're gonna have eight push pin fasteners. You'll have four up here on this plastic piece and then four lower. We're gonna have to remove all eight of those on both. Now behind our wheel well, we'll have to pull the liner back. There's going to be two 10 millimeter head bolts that we're going to have to remove that are holding our fascia to our vehicle. Now, because these are so difficult to see, I've got one removed. Um, they're going to be a gray in color, and there's gonna be one here going in this direction, and one here going in this direction. It essentially just holds these two pieces together. Underneath our vehicle, we're gonna have several different screws we're gonna to have to remove. You'll have four seven millimeter bolts we gotta remove. I did the other side, we have to take these two out. 10 T30 Torx bit screws that we'll have to remove. There'll be one, two, three, four, five on both sides. So we'll get those taken out. Now in your passenger side wheel well, we'll need to disconnect this main wiring harness. Now we can take our bumper off. Now on the front of our vehicle, if you have the pedestrian detecting device, um, that which is this unit right here, we'll have to remove it. Now on both sides of our air box here on the bottom, um, we're gonna have some fins that we need to trim off. These are just support fins. Um, we already did the other side. Now we need to come over to the passenger side and trim these out. I've marked out the fins on the driver's side that you need to do with white. <laughs> Come back with a, you can use a razor knife or a file. I'm just gonna clean up these, um, this little bit of plastic that was left behind by the multi-tool. On each side, we're gonna have two 13 millimeter bolts and one 15 millimeter nut that we're gonna have to remove. Um, what you'll wanna have handy is you want your bracket that goes on the appropriate side. Um, this is what our driver's side bracket's gonna look like. 
So if you have it in the same orientation, this hole and brace up here needs to go up into that bolt. And then these two holes on the bottom need to line up with the two bolts that we're moving. I want you to get your hardware in place for your two brackets on both sides. Um, you'll want to come back with a torque wrench and torque down the hardware to the specifications for the vehicle. Now your instructions are going to tell you to remove this 10 millimeter nut right here. Um, you can do that if you want to. We're not going to worry about it because um, this bracket is able to flex enough to get it out. Now on the back side of our pad box, we're going to have to uh, remove this gusset because when we go to put it up onto our bracket, it's going to be in the way. So we'll just take our multi-tool and cut it out. Now we need to take our pad unit and put it back into place. We'll use the smaller bolts that come in your kit with the flat washer. Mount it up. Make sure it's not getting caught on anything. And then follow it up on the back side with another flat washer. Now we're going to take an 11 millimeter wrench on the inside on that nut and a 10 millimeter socket on the outside. Snug that bracket down. Now we'll take a 8 millimeter socket and we'll remove the four bolts that are holding in our ACC sensor. Before we remove our last screw, we're going to be marking uh, a mark on top of our bracket back here and on the sensor bracket so that we know we're putting this exactly in the right place when we go to reassemble everything. It'd help to use a trim panel tool or a flathead screwdriver to do this. We'll set this to the side for now. Now we can take one of our longer bolts that comes in our kit, put a flat washer on it, and we're going to slide it over the ends of our brackets we just installed. I'll follow this up with a little bit of red Loctite, a split washer. I will need to come back and torque these down to the specifications and the instructions. Now with everything torqued down, we can go ahead and put our sensor back in place. Now that we've got our wiring run, uh, we've got our four pole here waiting for our six pole to go on. And we've got our breakaway switch for our Blue Ox Patriot. Um, we've got the plug ready for it to be plugged into. So um, we've got those two sets of wiring run. This is the time when you'll want to throw your fascia back on. All we're gonna do is put it back on, clip it in these top two clips that are the last two to hold it on. Go up underneath, trace out these openings, see if these hit anywhere that we might need a trim for them, and then take our fascia back off and make our necessary trim. We're just gonna slide it over. These tabs. Get those clipped into place. And then we'll just have to loosen stuff down here make sure it'll go there we go just get everything lined up as if it was going back on and then we can make our marks now when it comes to marking the back side of the fascia um, it's gonna be very very difficult to get back there because we have this whole splash guard under if you can manage to get through the wheel wall somehow um, to reach your arm in there to mark it I've just kind of eyed it up by looking behind through this gap and kind of eyed up push on the back, make sure that you're pushing against the firm portion of the base plate, and then just mark a hole, and we'll drill a two and a quarter inch hole for our opening. Now we can take our bumper back off because we're gonna need to do a little bit of additional trimming. 
Now with our fascia back off our vehicle, we need to remove this bottom plastic panel because we're gonna to have to do some trimming to the bracketry down here at the bottom and we don't wanna damage the plastic panel on the bottom. So we'll have 11 screws that we'll have to remove. These three, you're gonna to have to remove from the bottom side and then there's going to be five along the edge here down at the bottom and then three more up on the other side. You'll take a seven millimeter socket and get those removed. Now we need to take a trim panel tool and we need to get this air temperature sensor out of our way because it is attached to this bottom plastic piece. We're just gonna pry this up and then we're going to tie it up in a higher location I'm just gonna tie it up here. This is where the uh, manufacturer recommends to tie it off to. We'll zip tie it off to this connector, and then that way you'll still get an accurate temperature rating from being close to these openings. We'll set that off to the side for now. You should be able to just lift off this plastic piece and set it to the side. Now we've marked out our areas per the instructions that we need to trim. Um, this is going to be on the lower part of that, uh, that plastic fascia we just pulled off. This is where we just pulled the screws out of. This is going to be on the left side or the driver's side of the bumper. We'll have to trim this little piece out and we'll have another section on the passenger side. Now on the bottom five screws, wherever they go into the bumper, um, they're going to have you remove the two outermost ones. Um, we've still got our one here, but you can see over here, I've already removed this one. You wanna make sure you cut very gently along the sides and then go in at an angle. It definitely helps you if you have a multi-tool because you do not wanna go through this bottom decorative plastic. Now with all our trimming done, we can go ahead and take that lower fascia and put it back onto our bumper. Now with an extra set of hands, we'll take our fascia and put it back up into place. Now at this point, we're going to get all of our wiring plugged back in on our fascia and then get our fascia re-secured the way that we took it off. Hopefully this video helped you decide whether or not the Roadmaster base plate kit is right for you and your 2023 Ford Escape.